What's up guys, Specstar here today with my draft recap for the Dual Society Draft League. Uh, it's a league run by my man Mew, and it is a league which is points with a little bit of a twist in that you can get one unban uber type mon for free. And I drafted this team here and I'm going to talk briefly about it, some of the mons I took and why. And this is a league I'm going to be uploading to my channel, so you should be seeing battles for this in not too long. And this is the first Pokemon here I took, and this is a Xerneas. And the twist? I am not allowed to use Geomancy. That's the one restriction on this mod. But, I have used non-Geomancy Xerneas in an Ubers league before, and even with all Ubers in that league, it put in the work, it showed it can get the job done. Um, actually, one of my favorite sets in the Ubers tier is Choice Scarf Xerneas. One of my favorite Pokemon to use in Ubers. It actually just has a ton of power with its 131 special attack. You get up to 397 special attack, and then you have Fairy Aura, which boosts the power of Fairy type moves 1.33 times. So. A lot of Pokemon aren't taking Moonblast very well at all, and that's kind of the allure of Xerneas, even without Geomancy. Uh, there are quite a few things this thing can do, actually. It has very respectable bulk, 95, 98 defenses with 128, or 126 special attack. It has a lot of utility moves, Aromatherapy, Defog, uh, Rest, Sleep Talk, all that fun stuff. Thunder Wave, Toxic even, Roar to Phase, a lot of interesting possibilities, and it has some, a lot of different coverage moves. Uh, because it has such powerful fairy coverage, a lot of people don't know how good of coverage are outside of fairy this Pokemon has. Close Combat, Focus Blast, Grass Knot, obviously the Hidden Powers, Mega Horn, Outrage, which you probably don't need Outrage. Psychic, Psy Shock, Thunder, a Zen Headbutt, a lot of interesting options this Pokemon has. And I, with the fourth pick, I really wanted to try this Pokemon out. I, I think most people would say that in a fairly standard league, they've never used Xerneas. And I fall into that category. I wanted to try it out, and I look forward to using it. With my next pick here, I went and I took Garchomp. And a lot of people know what this thing does. Uh, the main reason I took Garchomp here, well, aside from the fact that I wanted Mega Gallade and it got sniped, like, right before I picked, but <laughs> one of the main reasons I took Garchomp is it deals with poisons, which beat Xerneas, and it deals with steals, which beat Xerneas, so this Pokemon actually has great offensive synergy with Xerneas, and that's why I was very excited to pair the two of them. And Xerneas beats some of the things that take on Garchomp. Xerneas, it's not resistant to ice, but it munches on ice moves. And it definitely takes uh, the dragon moves that Chomp doesn't love to take. With my next pick here, I went and I took Skarmory. And Skarmory just completes my Fairy Steel Dragon Core with Chomp, Xerneas, and Skarmory, which I think is some power. It also helps Xerneas with taking on steals and poisons. I just with my first few picks, I wanted to build around Xerneas perfectly to make sure I could really showcase Xerneas, really get it working, because that is a lot of power I do not want to squander. And aside from uh, taking on steals and poisons and all that fun stuff, it of course gives me bulk to start to have a defensive core and it can switch in on a lot of things that I couldn't do with my first two Pokemon. But also it sets up rocks and it sets up spikes for Xerneas, which gives me some scenarios where I can clean or just break with Xerneas. And I feel like the two will pair very well and that's why I wanted to grab Skarmory here for 14 points and Chomp was 15. With my next pick here, I went and I took Amoongus. This is where I'm starting to look at building a Fire, Water, Grass core, because why not get a good dual core? Um, you know I love Amoongus if you've been watching my channel. It has done a ton of work for me two seasons in a row in UNL. This is a Pokemon I'm a big time believer in. It helps uh, deal with quite a few things. It, it builds a strong uh, 
what do you call it, strong defensive coral with Skarmory, and it gives me the foundation to continue building on the core later when I do grab my bulky water, which you cannot see yet, but I'll get to it for sure. Uh, Mungus is a great Pokemon in that it has moves like Spore, uh, Stun Spore, you can have uh, physically defensive utility sets with synthesis and stuff like that. It has that beautiful ability regenerator which lets you throw an assault vest on it and have it do specially defensive things, which it can do very, very well. And with my next pick here, I went and I took Incineroar, and that is me continuing to build on my cores right off the bat. I took Incineroar really early, and that's because it was five points. And for those of you who don't know, five points is what Incineroar generally costed around the ballpark of before it got the ability Intimidate. After it got Intimidate, it generally goes for about nine, ten points. So to me, getting Incineroar at five points was just a massive steal I was not willing to pass up on. It, it has a few different sets, and it's my Z user, so of course I can throw on the Incinium Z. It's one of my four Z users. I actually have four. I had 25 points to pick as much as I want, and it just kind of worked out this way that Incineroar was a good pick for it. And that will turn Darkest Lair into a very powerful Malicious Moonsault. Of course, it has great Assault Vest sets, which gives some durability to help me build a defensive core with Amoongus and things like that. Skarmory it works well with too. It also gives me a Dark type, which is my first resistance to both Dark and Ghost, which is always a great thing to have. And something that uh, is can be a little bit of a luxury. A lot of times, teams don't have the best answers to those two types, which make them so powerful in draft league this offensive spam of ghost and dark and that's why i grabbed incineroar there in the fifth round and here in the sixth round i went and i took thunderous incarnate and uh, there's a few reasons why i took thunderous incarnate one is i have skarmory here which sets up both hazards so i can hazard stack and then use this ability defiant which will give me a two times attack boost if I bring it in on a defog switching, which is lovely for me. And it also is just value there. Um, Thunderous Eye in the sixth round. Yeah, give me some of that. It also gives me another ground immunity, which is very nice for Incineroar and things like that. I guess it's also kind of another defog, but not really. Can defog, probably won't defog. And it helps with my speed tiers because up to this point my fastest Pokemon was Garchomp at 333 and Thunderous is a lot better at 353, it gives me a lot more speed on my team and betters my speed tiers. And Thunderous is my main Z user. It's one of my four but it's the main one and the one I spent majority of my 25 points on. I picked it over Garchomp. And it's a tough decision, but Thunderous just has such great coverage options that it makes a phenomenal Z user. Uh, especially nice with a Defiant potential. So those are my first six rounds of picks, and let me go to my next six. With my next pick here, I went and I grabbed myself a Slowking, and that is going to give me a beautiful Regenerator Core with Amoongus and Slowking. Actually, Suicune was available here, which made my decision tough, because I really like Suicune. I just thought Slowking fit my team a lot better. Uh, the Psychic Typing was nice to add, and it just pairs so well with Amoongus. Both of them having that ability Regenerator and then just munching hits back and forth and recovering up all that health. Slowking's a great, especially defensive wall. It can do things like Trick Room, even Calm Mind. A lot of different options for this Pokemon, and it was just a very good fit for my team in the seventh round for 11 points. Now here, I believe at this point I had, if I didn't have the most points, I had one of the most points left. So I decided here that I had the luxury to go and grab myself an Excadrill. And I was confident that I would be able to get a Sand Setter to abuse that Sand Rush. And it's just a lot of power to add to my team. Uh, I'm not sure it's bit really the best fit, uh, style-wise, type-wise, anything-wise. It was just a lot of power for me to get in that late of a round in value, and I had to jump at the opportunity. Um, 
uh, having another form of hazard control in it as a spinner was very nice for me too. Also gives me another rocker which wasn't my top priority but was always very nice. And after I took X control here I had a decision to make if I wanted to grab my sand setter first or if I wanted to go and grab my mega but I went and I grabbed Charizard Y and that was because you may be asking Charizard why did he choose it? I'm sorry guys that was terrible. My bad. I'll take that one. That's, that's on me. Uh, I grabbed Charizard Y because there was still seven people who didn't have a mega and there was two megas I really liked and was looking at and those were Medicham and Charizard and I didn't want to risk both of them getting sniped because there were, what, 24 picks before I was back up to make my next pick. And I did not want to risk it getting sniped. Uh, Charizard gives me another ground immunity, which is very nice. It just has great offensive synergy with my team. Pairs well with Excadrill, and of course you guys see next I took Tyranitar, which was my plan. Pairs very well with Tyranitar. Pairs very well with Garchomp. This thing is just a threat. It it breaks through teams, and a lot of the best answers to Charizard are going to have a hard time dealing with Garchomp, Excadrill, and Tyranitar. And I don't think I've taken Charizard Y before, so this is going to be fun for me to use. It just could fit my team well offensively. It just fit like a glove and not OJ's glove. My next pick here... You guys are not going to be questioning this pick too much. Not only am I the Specs Tar, and this is T Tar, uh, that I can throw Specs on, but it's going to give me the Sand Rush for Excadrill. It's going to pair very well with Charizard Y. It's just a lot of potential to abuse this Pokemon, which was still available in the ninth round, or the tenth round, my bad, and I wanted to use it. It's been way too long since I've used Tyranitar. I genuinely love this Pokemon, I love using it, but it's just been going before I've been ready to take it. Not this time, I went out and I grabbed it, very happy to have it available there in the 10th round, giving me some sand for my Excadrill, which I'm excited to use. And this left me with 3 points, which is not much. And I decided here to get myself a Swirlix. And Swirlix was a good pick for me here because I wanted a web user that left me with two points left so I could get a sun abuser. And for one point, the best option was Swirlix. And this mon has sticky web, and I got the Z move on it, which I could definitely abuse with its 59 special attack and 48 attack. This thing's gonna have some power. Maybe throw off some Inferno Overdrive, some Twinkle Tackles, a lot of power. Mostly it's just here to set up webs, get in Burden, and then go for something like Endeavor, which you can possibly do. Uh, some different options for it, but mostly you'll see a lot of that. Magic Coat's very nice on this Pokemon, helps it set up webs. Uh, for one point, just some value here. Didn't want to blow the re remainder of my points on something like Ariados or Krikatoon. That way I could get a good Chlorophyll Pokemon. Speaking of good Chlorophyll Pokemon, what I took here and used my two remaining Z points on. Actually I had three, but I didn't have another one point to spend on it. But what I used my remaining Z points on is Sawsbuck. And Sawsbuck is a Pokemon I actually remember using a lot in Gen 5 before they banned uh, chlorophyll being paired with sun and I had some fun times using this Pokemon I swept through some teams and it has a few interesting options uh, with Z moves I can do some stuff like bloom doom breakneck blitz all out pummeling savage spin out some real interesting options even a uh, tectonic rage Gigavolt Havoc. It has a lot of Z-Move options and I don't think everyone knows that. This Pokemon is a sleeper in my opinion. It is not necessarily priced the way it should be. Uh, I have moves here and the baton pass rules are you can pass uh, speed by itself or any other stats freely. So I can use this Pokemon as a baton passer, get baton pass, use agility, get it on there sword stance and growth which is gonna be fun because oh it doesn't learn growth what the hell am I talking about 
I swore this Pokemon did, but I guess I'm losing it. Maybe I don't remember the good old days of Gen 5 as much as I thought I did, but still. It can baton pass agility and sword stance. It can set up sword stances for itself. It can, uh... <laughs> There's some cheeky stuff it can do, too. I can throw that ability Serene Grace on it. Then I can get Secret Power thrown off Paralysis. <laughs> I can get, a uh, Headbutt's flinching Pokemon down. Does it get Zen Headbutt? Doesn't get Zen Headbutt, but... I can do some flinchy stuff with that, throw on synthesis on there. Uh, its defensive stats aren't great, but they're not horrible. Maybe there's definitely potential to use it defensively, or just get some bulk to help me better pass stats. Uh, some interesting options. I thought Sawsbuck for two points on my team is a very good value, good steal in the 12th round. And that's going to be my team here. I got dual weather. Xerneas with a Fairy Steel, Dragon Core, Garchomp, Skarmory. I also got a Moongus, Incineroar, Thunderous, Slowking, Excadrill, Slurpuff, and my Sawsbuck. So this is a pretty fun looking team. I'm actually very excited to start getting some matches with this. And I will have them uploaded. And it shouldn't be too long until you guys see them. I want to thank you guys for watching this. Have yourselves a good night.